Hello and welcome back to another video on Dobby Deity and the Watford fan channel. Welcome to a video that we do every year. Everyone seems to love it. I've got a list behind me here of Watford players currently contracted to the football club. And I'm joined by Jacob Colshaw to do keep, sell or loan. We were saying before we just came on air, it's interesting that uh, I'm doing the intro and we've still got you on the video as well, which is probably a first <laughs> for the channel. As well. I think it's because you know I've got... I've got the sheet behind me, so I'll be able to keep track. Mate, I'm so happy to be on this because I remember doing it last year and thinking, oh, actually, did I do it last year? I think I might have missed a year. Or was it the year before? I think I did it the last time we, we stayed in the championship. And that one, interestingly, caused more debate than the one we were in the Premier League. Because yeah. I feel like at the end of any championship season, there's a lot more, I feel like there's a lot more change. There's a lot more up in the air about which manager's going to come in, whether that player will be fancy. And I think, particularly this squad, Sam, I don't know if you're the same, mate, but I feel there's such a split in opinion about what to do with some players, and I'm sure we'll come on to that. We'd love to hear what you think in the comment section below because there's just so many different kind of subplots in this Watford squad. So, mate, buzzing for this. Can't wait to can't wait to get into it. If you could let us know your thoughts on who you would keep, sell or loan this season as well, please let us know in the comment section down below and on our socials. We apologise that it's not the clearest over here, all the players, but we'll put a picture on our socials after. So, Let's kick things off, Jacob, with the goalkeepers. We've got three to choose from. Let's start off with Daniel Backman. Keep, sell or loan? OK, Daniel Backman, interesting one. Uh, again, a player, as I mentioned, who has a split opinion. One year left on his deal. I wouldn't be surprised if we did cash in on him. Um, and I wouldn't be opposed to us either bringing another keeper or giving... Okoye a bit more game time. Uh, I know he's kind of been frozen out a little bit this season. Well, I say a little bit. He has been frozen out this season. Hamer is a backup. I thought Hamer actually looked all right by the, by the mistake uh, against Coventry. But anyway, on Backman, I think with a year left on his deal, if he's not going to renew, and I don't think we should let him go on a free at 28, I probably would sell. Um, I think Backman's been a great servant for us. But I think when you put all of that into the context um, of him at the moment, I probably would cash in on him, uh, Sam. So, it's a sell for me. Yeah. What, what do you reckon? I, I agree with you. I'd probably sell Daniel Backman. I think we're going to wanting we're going to want to look for as much money as possible that we can generate out of the current squad. And I think Dan Backman, even if it's only a couple of million, I think he's one of those. So I'll cross out his name over here. As I say, we'll put a picture on our social media after of players uh, of the players that we finally come up with. Um, but moving on to the other two goalkeepers, Maduka Akoya. I mean, the thing is, Sam, with him. We've spent six million pounds on him. We kind of have to keep him for another season. We, I don't think we can yeah. really, we, I don't think we can sell him. And if we are going to sell him, we'd make very, very well. We would lose money on him. Um, yeah. I think we, I think he has to be part of the squad, right? If it's even if it's just as a number two, so I, I would keep a Koye. Um, I guess the, the only thing with the goalkeeper situation is if we bring in someone else, then it might give him the opportunity to move out on loan. Yeah. But I think for now, until we bring someone else in, I think you just have to say keep purely based on numbers. So I'd keep a Koye. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think at least as a backup goalkeeper, I think probably worth giving him another season. What about Hamer? Because I think personally with Hamer, albeit the Coventry game, he wasn't great in the second half. I think as a third choice goalkeeper, he's fine. I think, it, mate, I think it's it's a good player to have in and around the squad. I mean, even if we don't get promoted this season, he's the type of guy who's been there, he's done it. He's been at Leicester, Swansea. Um, it, it, he's got he's got that championship experience. And I think if he's not going to play week in, week out, you need players like that in the squad. So I'd keep Hamer, I'd keep a Koya. I'm just very interested to see if we maybe dip into that market and look for a keeper, Sam, because I, I saw it was a rumour about us being linked with a Spanish keeper. I forgot the name, but... Just the link alone made me think we probably do need someone else, don't we? If Batman goes, could you see us dipping into that market? Like, I mean, I think uh, I, even I maybe say, as a free agent. Yeah, I, I was really critical of Daniel Batman um, throughout the season. There, there were some moments where he was brilliant, uh, made some unbelievable saves, but I think too many times he was either too rash. I look back to that kung fu kick against Huddersfield, or <laughs> not coming off his line enough. His distribution wasn't amazing, so. Yeah, he's been here for a few years now, so fair play to Dan. Uh, and as I said before, wish him luck. So I think probably a new number one would be good to come in. Um, but I'll put a tick next to Okoya and Hamer then to have them in and around the squad. Um, before going on to the centre-backs, because there is a big list of them, um, let's do both of the full-backs, first of all. Um, OK. Starting off with left-back, 
James Morris, who young player of the year last year, I thought he had a pretty good season. I thought he did, mate. I thought he did. I think he didn't probably expect the game time he got in the end, purely because obviously with injuries, etc., um, a Kamara suspension, it, it kind of lended himself that he was going to going to play him. From what we've heard, just kind of you hear stuff around the club, like he's a he's a very well respected professional, um, someone who gets along really well with a lot of the squads. Seems to have bed himself in like the sort of social group with with Cathcart and Clevs, etc. So, I, I I mean, it's, it's it's a keep for me. I think the fact that we've extended his uh his contract as well even i think i go back to i put a tweet out at the time sam where ben manga basically talked about its mentality over talent and that's not to say james morris isn't a talented player but there's kamara's a better left back technically right so uh, but what it does show is james morris is one of those players you need around the squad so sam for me i'd keep um and i think it was a good move to extend his contract i think he's, he's a good player to have in a championship squad he's not going to be the first name on the team sheet but when he's come in the Norwich game, I think, is the best example. He's come in, steadied the ship, did what he had to do, and is a safe pair of hands. And you know what you're going to get from James Morris. So it's a keep for me, mate. Yeah, definitely. definitely, yeah. I, I think Morris will be excellent squad player, to be honest with you. Probably not a starter. I'd go back into the market for a left back. But I think on the substitutes bench, I think he's, he's definitely a good option. Um, so, Sam, who's... one of the... Sorry, mate. One of the one of the um, interesting things, I don't know if you worked this out, is about Jordan Zam- uh, Zamora... Udinese, mm. yeah, yeah. Can you see that? Could you see that? Because I mean, he left Bournemouth, went to Udinese. They've just brought in another left back, yeah. another full back. Could you see it? I could see it. It would be an interesting one. I think he. I mean, he, he sort of went missing a bit for Bournemouth in the second half of the season because of his contract situation. I'm not too sure, but speaking to a Bournemouth fan, uh, they think he's a really good player, and they were quite frustrated to see him going to Udinese because they think he will end up at Watford. We did right. say the same thing, though, last summer about uh, Festi Abacelli going from Derby to Udinese. We thought he'd end up at Watford and he didn't. So it's definitely one to keep an eye on. Um, but a mm. left-back who is in the Udinese squad, Not we got two players on who aren't contracted to Watford at the moment. And one of them is Hassan Kamara. <coughs> because I think if Watford got him back, we probably could go and get him back. Is he someone that you'd look to bring back to Vicarage Road or move on in the summer? Move on and move on for me, Sam. I mean, I, I look Kamara player of the season when he came in. I think he probably was player of the season because it was such a low bar. Um, been actually quite disappointed, if I'm honest, this you know, over the past season, Sam, because I think it's it's the lack of consistency from a player who you'd expect to be a lot more consistent with his performances. And I think as someone who we all expected when we went down, if we kept him, he'd be one of the better players in the league in that position. I've been disappointed, if I'm honest. Um, just a lot of lot of mistakes. A lot of times he's out of position, just bombing forward without any sort of idea what's going on behind him. Um, yeah, I think I think Kamara is disappoint, disappointed me, if I'm honest. I'm, I mean, we mentioned on another video, didn't we, about the investigation into the fee. I mean, yeah. 16 million, Sam. Oh, my God. How, Ridiculous, yeah. It's, he's not worth that, is he? I mean, how much is he actually yeah. worth, realistically? I think we were probably, if we were selling him, probably lucky to get four or five million for him, if we're being honest. Um, exactly. Yeah, again, nothing against Kamara. I just think it's, it's some, I think he interacted with the fans really well at a time where it was difficult to interact with any of the players, but definitely it's time to move on. So I'll put a tick next to James Morris's name and I'll cross off Hassan Kamara and all the best to him at Udinese. But so we need a left going, back. We need a left wing back, don't we, Sam? I mean, if we look at the formation Ishmael's going to play three four three, yeah. that we need we need a starter, don't we? A left wing back. I mean, yeah, we're we so light in that department. Yeah, at the moment it's only James Morrison in that position, and what we don't want, I don't think, is we'll come on to Ken Sema, but I don't think we want to end up moving Ken Sema back over to left back. We don't want another situation like last season, uh, like last season at the start when we were playing left backs at right backs and right backs at left backs at the start of the season. So it is so important. I think we go into the market, whether that be Zamora, like you said, or going in for alternative options that we bring in. I'd say probably at least two left backs, to be honest with you, to go along with James Morris. Um, but going on to the right backs, then we've got four options there. Let's start off with someone who joined in January and someone who I know you really like, Jacob, is uh, Jao Ferreira. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Ferreira, actually. I think the only the question mark I have, uh, have over him at the moment is just his injury record. I mean, there's been a lot on his Instagram about him doing kind of like rehab stuff and kind of strength and conditioning, whether that's something he's noticed 
that he needs to kind of work on the imp- impact on his body. In particular, I guess the, the difference in tempo from the, 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 the previous club he played at with Benfica and it's a different tempo, isn't it? So I think with, with Ferreira, I'm a big fan of him. I think he actually really lends himself to that right wing back slot. I think if you look at his attributes in terms of his attacking qualities, in terms of his willingness to get forward um, and really supporting that kind of right wing back, I think there's, there's traits of Kiko in him. I do, when I watched him for the first time, I thought there's, I mean, Kiko obviously had a lot more speed, etc., to his game, but his, his willingness to get forward into that, into those second and third, final thirds, is, is something that I noticed. It's just a case of keeping him fit, Sam, but I think it's, it's no question for me. He's at a great age at 22. Uh, we've obviously just signed him the link with Helen Acosta. I think it makes sense to keep him, Sam. Um, and I think hopefully, if he can stay injury free, he can be a, he can be a key player for us. And I think in particular in Val's system as well. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, so I mean, we'll come on to the other three. But is he a starter then for you when fully fit? I think he has to be if he's if he's fully fit out the options we've got, mate. Um, I mean, the, the, there's a couple of question marks. I mean, the way I looked at it, Sam, we're at the end of last season. With Ryan Andrews coming in, I think he's a great backup to have. You've got a youngster there who can learn off Ferreira. If in the cup games you can rotate it, I think they've got similar qualities, and particularly as wing backs. So I think in terms of the one position you're looking at the Watford squad, you're thinking, you know what, we're actually all right there. I guess the bigger question, Sam, and I'll throw this one over to you, mate, is Ferreira. I imagine we agree we'll keep Andrews. I think he's a, he's a great talent to have at the club. Yeah. So and Gakia, that's 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 a really big talking point. What do we do with Jeremy and Gakia? Yeah, definitely. I think Ryan Andrews definitely keep him. For me, he's the starting right back. I saw enough from him in those last few games last season to think that he's good enough. Obviously, still a lot of learning to do. Jeremy Ngaki is one that I'd move on, to be honest with you. I think we've got four right backs at the moment. I think we benefit from Harriet having Mario Gaspar in the squad, um, a player who Andrews and both Ferreira can learn off as well. Obviously, it's an experienced head in the dressing room. So it's a toss up between getting rid of either Ngaki or Gaspar. And to be honest with you, I'd probably just about keep Gaspar. And Gak has been in now for two, three, four years. And I don't think we've really seen him progress as a player. We've seen some good moments. But on the whole, I think it's been quite disappointing. Would you put that down to, mate, do you reckon? I, th- I think, again, like so many players, such as uh, with Ismail Asar um, and, and Imran Luzer, probably, I think the amount of head coaches that these players have worked under, it's been really difficult for them to really get to know a style of play and for that their their style of play is changing pretty much every few weeks when the new manager comes in and for that I don't think they've been able to kick on but do you think it's been disappointing his time at Watford considering the reviews we got from the West Ham fans yeah I'm I'm, I feel I feel for him actually a lot I think you bang on mate in terms of the 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 managerial merry-go round is really is really um just just stopped in Gakka in his tracks really because I think when you saw him at West Ham and I'm not saying his career is done by any stretch but I think it's done at Watford I, I mean I remember there was a link with him going to Hull potentially last summer I think it was I think he's a championship quality player I just don't think he, I think he just needs for himself just to get away from Watford I think it's one of those where it's run its course and I thought there was there was bright spots under um, under Vladimir Ivic I think he was a player yeah. that he really liked quite a defensive minded player um, great in the tackle, I have to say, in Gakia, but he just hasn't developed his game going forward. I mean, that is, unfortunately, with the modern game, the fullback has to be better at going forward. I mean, you like and start, I think, if you look at a high level, someone who got a lot of criticism for something similar was Wambasaka. Great in the tackle, great defensively, but going forward just has lacked a little bit of quality and composure. And he's improved on that, to be fair under Ten Hag. So, I mean, you look at Ngaku and you think you, you need to go somewhere else just to have a clean slate, get your development back on track. But I, I, I do feel for him because I don't think he obviously hasn't been properly coached, clearly. I mean, it's it, it, I haven't really seen a lot of development from when he first joined to now, Sam. And it's how many seasons is that? Like 2020, was it 2020 he joined? Yeah, I think uh, 20, so, yeah. yeah, 2020. Yeah. I mean, we're coming up to three years. Yeah, you know, in, yeah in, exactly. in those in that early period as well, we should be like. So I think you got you need to move move Ngaki on personally. I agree, and Mario Gaspar. <laughs> this is a weird one actually because I think as a squad player, I'd probably keep him. Yeah, um, I, agree. I thought he actually grew into the game, uh, grew into the game, grew into the season, and I think he actually played his best game as a central midfielder. Like technically, he's really tidy. I think physically, maybe 
isn't cut out to be a fullback in the championship. Um, I'd probably keep him, Sam. I'd probably keep, yeah. give us give us give us one more season, Gaspar. Play him in the cup games, rotate him, and then if we really need him, we can put him in. Whether where he actually fits in Ishmael's system is another question to be asked, though, because you know we've got to remember that this is a three four three with high intensity, high pressing. It's going to take its toll on players like Gaspar. So I don't know if he actually would get much game time, but I guess as a figure in the dressing room, I, I wouldn't be wouldn't be opposed to it. Yeah, I agree with you. I think in and around the squad, I think he's a good option. So we'll be keeping Ryan Andrews mm. and Mario Gaspar. It's goodbye to Jeremy and Gavkia. Moving on to the second. <laughs> I thought it felt quite brutal then. Moving yeah, on about to the like Love Island or something. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the centre backs, though, we've got a long list here. Um, a couple of players returning from their loan spells as well, a couple coming back from injury. Um, so let's start off, I think, with probably the most straightforward one Ryan Porteous. Jacob, captain material for this season? I think you're looking at the squad at the moment, mate, and I don't think there's many better options. Um, I actually think that was one of the key things I wanted. The club to do this summer is bring in a bring in a captain. I know that's quite rare, and you'd have to pay a lot, and you'd probably have to pay it from another team, pay a lot from another team. So it's unlikely. Um, I think out of the options we've got, probably the best option. Um, I, I think Portis has been slightly. I think uh, again, I'm just worried with him. If, if the, the managerial changes keep happening, his development will be stunted because clearly he needs coaching. You know, I yeah, think that he's the type of player where. It's, it's clear he's got ability, but he's been rash. And I think yeah. when he's next to Wesley Hoot, there is definitely a, a question of Hoot's out of position quite a lot. So Portis is having to kind of accommodate him as well. Um, but Portis has, has had quite a, quite a few individual errors. But I think he's definitely got the personality. He's definitely got the character. There's definitely ability there. I like the way he's quite he's confident. There's almost a little bit of kind of, I'm going to dominate the striker. It doesn't matter who I'm playing against. There's almost that sort of attitude with him. I like, I like Ryan Porteous and I think it's a definitely a keep. And I think in a back three, one thing to note, in a back three system, players like Porteous will thrive, in my opinion. If you put him on the right of a back three, the way he drives with the ball, gets a little bit of extra cover as well, so he can be a bit more confident and just doesn't have to... It's like it to Harry Maguire when he was at Leicester. When Harry Maguire was at Leicester, he was a completely different player to when he was at United, completely based on the back three system, right? Like with Porteous, you feel like he fits in a three really well. Just depends who's next to him, I guess, so... I think it's definitely a keep for me, mate. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I agree with you. I think coaching is going to be really important because he came in, I think he really hit the ground running. But I think, I don't want to say he got worse as the season progressed the second half, but he certainly didn't improve. Um, for example, Coventry away, first half he was brilliant. Second half he was a shambles. Um, so I, I definitely keep hold of him. and he's just started <laughs> well. The other January signing and someone you named dropped before, Wesley Who. I personally think he'd be a good enough squad player. I think he's too much of a liability to start, to be honest. Yeah, agreed. Agreed, Sam. I mean, <coughs> we've talked about it before. <coughs> Sean Dyche, we've talked about it before. Um, who, If you're going to play him, you're going to play him on the left of a three, right? I think he lacks pace on the turn, which I think teams targeted, didn't they? They were playing that ball in the channel between Kamara and Hoot, and Hoot was having to turn, and it was all over the shot, really. But then there's times where I think you're, quite, you're good on the ball. He, he loves this switch to play, doesn't he, Sam? He, he loves yeah. to, like, pick up the ball and just visit 40 yards pointlessly. I'm like, mate, it's a great – It's a, it looks great, but actually, what, what are we achieving with that sort of pass? But um, I think he's a squad player. I think you keep him. I don't think, again, he only came in in January. Are we realistically going to loan him? No. Are we going to sell him? No. My only mark, again, just to caveat that is – stories of Hoot being quite a, um interesting character in the dressing room at previous clubs. Just something worth to bear in mind, whether if he doesn't play as a squad player, will he kick up a fuss? He kicked up a fuss at Anderlecht. There's stories at other clubs. We just look, I don't know the guy, but I'm just re- judging it off what um, I've read. Um, so just something to bear in mind, if he's not playing week in, week out, will he be a bit of a interesting character to have? We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, interesting one, definitely. One to keep an eye on with Wesley Hu. Um, someone who's been in now for a few years, Christine Cabaselli, um, joined us in 2016, I want to say, in that summer transfer window. Um, I personally think time's up. Probably was a couple of years ago. Not sure how you feel about it, Jacob. Yeah. <sighs> Difficult one, isn't it? Again, contract ends at the end of the season. Um 
Cab Cab has been a great servant, hasn't he? I mean, he yeah. as you say joined twenty sixteen. Oh, it's really tough. I think I think I probably would move Cabasale on. I, I think don't get me wrong. I think some of the stick he gets is unjustified. Personally, yeah. I think there's yeah. it's, it is quite overboard. Some of the stuff I say about him as if he's the the main person responsible for everything going wrong. I think that's not fair at all, personally. But I wouldn't be surprised if we did we did move him on. Having said that, if you looked, at, we mentioned about personality, we are lacking it a bit, and I think he does bring that. Um, my, my caveat to that though, Jacob, is that he's been part of a squad which has ultimately failed now for three or four years. So I mm. think it's a case of getting rid of as many players who have been there for a sustained period of time. Like you say, that's nothing against Cabba's character necessarily. He's been a great ambassador for the football club, particularly with the work he does off the pitch. I just think his on-pitch performances don't justify him staying here anymore. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Should we go with Sal for him? Yeah, we'll go for Sal, Christian, we'll Cabba Sal. Um, a couple of players now who are coming back from their loans. One of them is William Trouste Um, I'm not really sure how it's working in terms of whether the club, because they stayed up uh, out in Italy, have an obligation to buy. Um, but with an option, Jacob, would you keep, sell uh, or, or loan him out again? No, I'd say ne never say never with Troost. I mean, when he left and he did that interview with, with Adam, uh, Adam Leventhal, I got the impression that he wasn't ruling out a return, but it did feel like a good buy, didn't it? Um, I actually really like Truce the Kong. I think for the level, I think I, I was I was surprised he fell down the pecking order like he did. Um, I know he's not everyone's favourite, but again, I, I look at personalities lacking at the moment. If we're honest, yeah. I would keep I would keep Truce the Kong. I have to say, I think you know, but again, a back three. I think. What do you reckon, mate? I, I'm a kid. I think I'm keep with uh, with oh. Truce the Kong. Yeah, I, I agree. I'd keep him if we can. I'm, I get, like I say, I'm not too sure how it works now with the loan agreement, whether the club have the, their club have to buy him. Um, but I think he was scapegoated so unnecessarily at points, particularly in that Premier League season. Um, but in some of the games he played this year, I thought he was excellent. Yes, he's got a mistake in him. He's not the best on the ball, but in the dressing room, in the squad, to use in the cup games, I'm not opposed to keeping him around at all. So a tick next to William Trooster Kong's name. Um, another player coming back from loan is Matty Pollock. Um, I personally think, I think he's a really good player, Matty. I know he didn't have the best game against Millwall on his debut. Um, and I know he's had a fantastic spell at Aberdeen. Their fans love him to bits and they want him to come back in the summer. I'm sort of torn between two things here. I think on the one hand, we've got a good player on our hands and I don't want another Ben Wilmot situation. On the other hand... I think we could probably get some money for him from Aberdeen. So it might be an opportunity to cash in. I'm sitting on the fence with this one. I'll give it to you. Oh, wow. Throw me. I, no, I think also another thing to mention, Sam, I think you bag on there is, does he want to return? You yeah, know, does he, what, does he does does he feel that Watford's a good place for his development after, you know, seeing other players kind of fall by the wayside at, at his age? So... I would actually, I'd keep, I'd keep Pollock, but yeah. I, I uh, would I, uh, I don't know. It's really difficult. I, I don't think we can guarantee him the game time that he wants. So I'd probably sell actually, because I don't think there's any point keeping him if he's, I, I, I just don't think so because I think what's going to unfortunately happen, mate, is the new managers will come in and this is nothing against Matty Pollock, but they'll favour the players who are, who they yeah. know a bit better than Pollock. And I think yeah. Pollock, if I was him, I'd actually move on. You want to think, yeah. realistic, as you say, he's loved by the Aberdeen fans. He's settled in so well. I think the Scottish Premier League is a great place for your development, particularly at a club like Aberdeen, where I mean, we mentioned with Tommy Hoban, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Didn't we about like kind of how there's a there's a gap between the bottom and the top, but it's you know there's a good chance you can maybe potentially get into U European football as well. So yeah. I, I think to get onto the map, I think Matty Pollock. I th I'd stay there, mate. I'd honestly, if he's watching, I'd, I'd be like, mate, stay, stay, stay at Aberdeen. But I'd, I'd look if he, if we can give him another chance, that'd be great. And if he did play, great. But I think if I was him, I'd probably move on. Yeah, definitely. I think for the good of his career, it's probably best that he stays at Aberdeen. I think he is a really good player who will go on to have a good career. What club that's at, I'm not too sure. But I think for the sake of his own development, it's probably best to move on. Um, and last two centre back to them, um, Francisco Sierra, who spent a lot of time last season injured, I'd probably move. 
I'm again another one I'm torn on actually because on his day he's really good. We saw in that first season that he played when we got promoted under Cisco that he was brilliant. But maybe move him on, maybe keep as a squad player. I'm not sure. I think, yeah, but uh, I he's tough, mate. I I think what I would say about Sierra Alta is on his day I think he's our best centre back mm. when he's on it. Um, the partnership he had with Truce was so good actually that season that I. I mean, don't get me wrong, he had the protection of Will Hughes, which I think we have to mention, but again, injury prone. We had an opportunity, didn't we, to catch in on him in hindsight. Would you have done that? I mean, probably because he didn't play much in the Prem. I think he's a good championship player, but would probably be no more than that. I don't think we'd ever see him as a starter in the Prem, mainly because I don't think he's good enough on the ball, but also his injury record probably isn't good enough to be demanding that. Um, So, Oh, mate, the, th- the only thing I would say is, and I don't want to keep going on about this, but we we can't sell everyone. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's a summer where we can't get rid of everyone. So I think you probably have to keep him. He's at yeah, 26 squad as a squad player. I think you, uh, because, mate, uh, honestly, I'm looking at the squad at the moment and I'm thinking, yeah, we, we need new players. But at the same time, we can't get rid of everyone just because of the numbers and stuff. Yeah, definitely. And someone who is out of contract at the time of recording this we're still waiting for Watford to release the retained list um, we're looking out for in particular three names um, and we'll come on to the other two and we go on to midfield but one of them is Craig Cathcart who I love Craig Cathcart to bits but I think we really saw him I don't know if slow down is the right word but I think we're probably now seeing that he's past his peak um, but is he someone that you'd still want to keep around for the dressing room? I'm um, I'm really Craig on mate. Um, unfortunately, I think. Yeah. Can he, do you know what? At times he was probably our best, our best centre back this season at the start. If we, you know, it's a long season. I know there's been a lot of bad games, but not from him. Just in general with Watford, but you always felt like he was one of our more reliable performers. And just slowly but surely this season, I think he's, and he's not just to blame, but I think his performance has definitely dropped off. So. And I think it goes back to that point you made about Cabasole, about moving certain players on just to get a refresh. And I think you need new players in the building just to keep it fresh. So I'd, I'd probably move Craig on if it was me, mate. So I'd sell him. Oh, well, release. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant servant for the club. And I hope that at some point, whether that's with his next club when he comes back to Vicarage Road or whether he just comes back to visit, we get to give him a real, uh, a real goodbye as well. Um, but moving on to the central midfielders, in the similar vein to... Uh, uh, to Craig Cathcart. Let's move on to Tom Cleverley. Um, Jacob, how are you feeling about this one? Similar to Craig, actually. Uh, I mean, I've got so much respect for Craig and and Tom. You know, what they've given to Watford um, has been, been amazing. Uh, again, I just think injuries, big problem with clubs. Uh, and his contract's running out. I probably wouldn't renew if it yeah. was me. Um, I think he knows that the injury, I think the injury, he, I think what, I think the final straw for me, unfortunately, is so brutal football, so cutthroat. But he did all that work to get back fit and then literally the game he came yeah. back in to pull his, I think it was a thigh injury, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I think it was Burnley away, wasn't it? In the warm-up, yeah. Yeah, I just, I, I just think we can't, I don't think, unfortunately, we can keep him. Um, so, yeah, I'd move, I'd move Cleverly on as well um, if it was me, mate. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree with you. Great servant again, like Craig Cathcart. Um, I think it is probably time to move him on. Um, now, someone who technically I don't think is contracted to Watford at the moment, but there's a chance that he could sign a new one is Dan Gosling. Similar one, I think, to Kafka and Cleverley. Yeah, I think so. I, I've, I've got, a, again, a lot of respect for Gosling. Not probably less so what he's done at Watford, but, well, obviously the big goal at Norwich, but more how he's conducted himself, how much of a professional he's been. I think he's been a credit to himself, actually, in terms of what he's had to go through in terms of just being completely frozen out of the team. His interview he gave at the start of the season, which was which was brilliant with Andrew French. Um, I think out of all three of them, he's the one I'd probably keep, mm. actually, thinking about it. I know the injuries are a problem, but I think with Dan, he's, he's, he's always looked at... I mean, I'm not saying the other guys haven't, but I, he's a little bit younger. He's 30, 32, I think. Um, th- yeah, uh, so he's 33 as well, actually. Clevs and Doug Gosling are both 33. Oh, and Sam, I'm going to throw him. this one over to you, mate. I'm going to throw this one over to you. Yeah, I'll probably move him on, Dan Gosling. Yeah. Again, I, I, the brilliant period he had at right back this season as well. Got it for him when he got injured. Um, but I think 
hope he does find another club, whether that's in the Championship or perhaps League One, to finish off his career. But probably would move him on. Um, but going on someone who I know you're a big fan of, Jacob, who I don't think has kicked on at all uh, since he joined Watford as Imran Loser, um, who I think looked really poor, particularly in the second half of the season, albeit he was coming back from injury. Have to throw that one in there. Um, I think we might disagree with this one because I think if we can get some money for Imran Loser, I'd probably cash in. Yeah, it, this is this is quite a tough one. One of the hardest ones, I think, for me. I mean, when you look on look at the squad on paper, mate, I think technically one of the best players we've got. Um, for me, when you, I, I think we've actually probably been playing him in the wrong role. I don't think he's a, he was a natural Will Hughes replacement. I think he's moulded himself into that. I think he's more of a progressive player. So maybe in like a number eight, um, we see him from Morocco playing quite quite high up. And look, I, I, in Lose's defence, mate, I know we, you mentioned there about the injury and stuff like that. I think what we've also got to men- mention, in and from my perspective, is how demoralising and how tough that must be for a player who is pretty much set on competing at his first World Cup and set on being in the squad to then being ruled out in what was just a complete freak in terms of how... I mean, it was just bizarre, wasn't it? He was sliding into the, sliding off the pitch. Is his? Is it's a, it's a, such a random injury that you wouldn't have expected, and for him to then have to deal with that, the rehab way he sees his, the rest of the squad out there, he sees Morocco do really well and get to a semi final, which he would have been a part of, yeah. and then he's probably thinking, "Am I going to be at another World Cup?" You know, so I yeah. think there's definitely something in that for me. Um, in terms of the drop-off in performances, because I, I, I agree with you, there has been a drop-off in his performances. He's looked like a player who hasn't really wanted to get injured. Um, yeah. I actually think uh, he signed a, his, his deal runs out in 2028. So he's one of the our more, um, he's one of the higher assets in terms of price that we've got. I think if he wants to stay, I'd keep him. But I think I'm getting the feeling he wants to move on. So I would sell him around loser. And I think there will be teams interested in him. Um, you know, I think even when we went for him, there was a couple of Premier teams sniffing around. So, I wouldn't be surprised if he went back to France, maybe Ligue 1, or, or even got a Premier League move with a newly promoted team. I know Wolves were interested at one point. Um, so, it's difficult because I like Loser. I think he's a good player. I think he'll go to another team and do well. And I think the World Cup stuff you have to bear in mind for me. Um, but if we're looking to get funds for the transfer window and we need to invest in the squad, I probably would would move him on, actually. So I, I do agree with you that it probably is the time to sell because I don't think he wants to, he wants to be here. From what, from what we're kind of speculating, but I, I don't think he's been... Sam, when you watch him, have you, has he looked like a player who really has been putting his body on the line? I'm not sure. And there's probably a bit of the yeah. injury in that as well. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think a lot of it comes down to the injury. I think particularly since that Millwall game where he got injured, I think he just, he just looked scared to really put his body on the line. And that's no detriment to him. I think a lot of players would feel similar to that. We see a lot of players come back from injury and just don't look the same. Um, and I think a player as well who I'd argue, I'm not really sure because of the amount of injuries that he's has, is if, he, if if he's got a future at Watford, is Tom Daly Bashiru. I really like Tom. I think there's a player there, but I think just too injury prone, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, I don't know whether there's something in the fact about the amount of injuries Watford have had. It's, it's, it's genuinely crazy. I mean, this season, I remember Billich mentioned it. And he, he got really unlucky, Billich, with that, actually. I think that goes under the radar, is the, the amount of injuries we had at that time when he was manager. Um, yeah, I think I think Delhi Bashiru needs needs to needs to move on again. So, liken it to Gakia, I think. Less so in the sense that he's had less opportunity, but I really like Delhi Bashiru. I think he's, I think he's, a, I think he's shown bright sparks, but I just, I think the injuries, I just feel so sorry for him, unfortunately. Yeah. So I think I'd probably have to move him on, mate. Yeah, I, I love Tom Daly and I genuinely, I, I think he'll go on to still have a good career, um, whether it's in England or perhaps in a different league, I'm not too sure. But I think just because of the injuries, he's someone who we should probably move on. Another player who I think looks really, really good, who I think could play a, a really key role for us next season is uh, Yasser Espria. Jacob, surely this one's a straightforward keep. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent keep. I think the only thing, the only thing that I'm worried about is if a bigger team comes sniffing for him. Actually, I think technically he's brilliant. Uh, just needs to physically maybe develop a little bit more. That will come with time. I think you looked at Pedro when we said the same thing, didn't we? When he first came in, that he just needed to bulk up a little bit. And and but I think what goes on the radar again with him, I think Sam is the amount of games he actually played this first season in England. You know, Zhao didn't play that many games. Um, yeah. 
so I, I really like Espria. I You know, I don't like the term of building the team around him, but I think when you look at his ability, he has to be one of the first names on the team sheet for me because creatively and his passing ability and his touch is 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 the best I think we've got actually now Pedro's moved on. Yeah, definitely. I, I think he's going to be vital for us next season and I think there is probably a small chance that he could move on if an offer comes in. Um, there was rumours of, I think might have been coming from Spain or France or a couple of clubs were interested. So, I think it's one to keep an eye out on, but he could be the natural Jao Pedro successor. Um, someone else is out of contract, like the ones we mentioned earlier, Leandro Bacuna. Move him on. I love Do him. You know what? Actually, I have to say, mate, I, I, like, I, I would move Bacuna on, but I think actually he's been he's been a pretty decent signing. Um, yeah. Look, he, he, was, he wasn't going to be the star, uh, the, uh, the, kind of the man of the match and the star player every game. But I think what we needed in that time I was actually quite. I was quite happy with Bakuna, and I think you know, fair play to him. He he did did what he had to do. Granted, there's better players, but I, I would move him on. But I thought, um, out, actually, out of all the free agents, he was the one that I was considering actually keeping the most. Um, yeah. but I think I think we'll move him on. Um, if, yeah. if I was just, I just think, yeah, I just think, just think, uh, release him yeah. if that's possible. Yeah, no, I, he couldn't make it onto the video today, but I think Bakuna's maybe someone that Charlie would keep as well. I know he's a big fan of him, um, but I suppose I, I personally move him on. I think he came in, did an okay job in the games that he played, but let's freshen things up. Ismail Kone um, is a player who's been linked with Udinese um, on loan or permanently, I'm not too sure, um, but. He's so young, I think, and he's still got so much to offer that I'd try and keep hold of him if we can. Yeah, this is this is a, again a really tough one because I, I read a few reports in Italy which suggested that we, he he was into, he was bought as a Udinese player but loaned to Watford, mm. which I think I think and he put a message saying thank you to Watford and I'm getting pressure he's not going to be here next season. Would I have kept him anyway? Probably. Um, I think don't think he's been. Brilliant, Kone. I think he's technically he's shown some sparks, getting glimpses of his ability. I think actually Italian football would suit him a lot more. Actually, I think a bit more time with the ball, a bit more time just to drive past players. I felt it was quite tough from there playing for Montreal, mate, and and then moving into England midway through the season is quite difficult to do. I think to get to the pace of it. I mean, you look at how many players it takes to actually adapt to the tempo of the game. So I think actually I probably would have. I would. I probably would have kept him, but I'm not going to lose any sleep over him moving on if he if if he is going back to Udinese. I'm going to have to push you, Jacob. Here, keep Sal alone. Wow. Uh, is, is he on player though? This is the question. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I'm not too sure. I'll if put a question mark next to Kone. Yeah, because I'm not sure if he is actually. Well, I say our player. He's a Pozzo player, but is he Watford or Udinese? Um, I guess yeah. the question is, would I have him back? Probably. So, yeah, I guess Keith would be at the three. He's yeah, not going to be if, sold, is he? So, yeah. No, I, mean. no. I, I agree. I think if he is our player, I'd probably try and keep him for at least until January, see how he's getting on, and then maybe move him on to Udinese. Um, a forgotten man who I completely forgot still played for Watford, Domingos Kina. Um <laughs> Keeps that alone. Wow, Jesus. I mean, how many... I mean, on his day, be, brilliant, but... But yeah. move him on, move him yeah. on. Um, that, that, that ship's gone. Yeah, we've, we've loaned him out now, what, three or four times. And I don't think, he had a good spell. I think it was at Barnsley. But I don't think, other than that, I don't think he's really... Went to Granada, yeah. didn't he? Elche, I think that was that was the other one he went to. Uh, yeah, for yeah. me, mate. Um, I think he, on his, he, he was such a brilliant talent. But again, it's similar to Ngakia. Just development, where's it gone? I mean, we have to ask questions about the club. Like, well, how has this been allowed to happen? But... That is probably what happens when you change the manager as frequently as we do. Yeah, exactly. And he's not the only one who suffered from that, as we have sort of touched on with a few players this video. Now, someone who I keep, actually, um, the last centre mid here, uh, is Eddie Kiembi. I think as a squad player, I've seen enough, at least. I know he's not absolutely unbelievable, but I've seen enough from him to think that he's got a role to play for us. Yeah, I, 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 Kiembe is someone who gets quite a bit, did get quite a bit of criticism. Um, for his performances, I I, I think Kiembe he does what he says 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 on the tin really doesn't he? I mean, you put him in the number six, he'll he'll recycle it, he'll distribute it. Again, he's not. It's what I find it again really fascinating about him 
similar to loser when he was at uh, when, when he was at KAS UPenn playing in Belgium, he was like at number eight, mm. number ten. But we changed him into a number six. So the managers yeah. that have come in have basically gone, actually, mate, you're not that position at all. In English football, you're going to be a number six. Um, and I think if loser moves on, you probably have to keep him. So I'd probably keep Kiembe. Yeah, I agree with you there. So it looks like, Jacob, we currently, according to us, that Watford only have two central midfielders going into next season in Yasser Espirin and PMB, maybe as Malcone as well. So it's an area that we're going to have to invest in in the summer, right? Mate, 100%. And I, I mean, even then, Espirin is not an out and out centre mid, is he? I mean, you look at the no. formation Ishmael is going to play 3 4 3. I, I understand why you put it, uh, yeah. Espirin there because he, he's got, he can play anywhere, really. But with a 3-4-3, three, three, you need two dynamic central midfielders. Now, could you see Kiembe in there? I probably could as a rotation player. But I, if I'm honest, I'm looking at the two centre mids in that formation. You're thinking, we need two new centre mids starting. We need starting yeah. players in this team. I mean, a lot of the comments we've made, Sam, is they, the players that we're keeping, we want to keep as rotation. So yeah. we, what we're saying here is we have to go into the market and buy players that are going to come straight in. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it's not going to work. Yeah, I agree with you, particularly to suit Ismail's system. But moving on to the front three, um, considering we hear that Ismail's probably going to go with a uh, three in attack. Um, the left wingers, first of all. Um, Ken Semmer, I think it's a keep, Ken. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I, that, that's, that's probably the easiest keep of all of them. Yeah, um, definitely. I, I, enough, I mean, he's, yeah, King, what a man. But just just genuinely, versus, we can play him left wing back, we can play him left wing, yeah. we can play him left mid, and he's just consistent. Uh, and yeah, you know what you're going to get from Ken. Yeah, exactly. He's versatile. I think he did go slightly off the boil towards the end of the season, particularly after that West Brom performance. But no doubt, I think he'll be back. And I think he offers us so much going forward. Um, someone else on the left. I wasn't sure whether to put him on the left or the right, because to be honest, I haven't seen enough of him. But Samuel Clue? Uh, I'd sell. Yeah. I'd sell yeah. Clue. Uh, yeah, it's the same with him oh. because I think they've seen glimpses. I think that suggest that there's a player in there, but he's just too injury prone, isn't he? But how about it? Do you know what, Sam? I mean, we've said that about so many players, and you're right. Yeah. I, I, I'm like, oh, there's a player there, but I mean, we just don't see it, do we? It's just, that is one of the most bizarre deals I think I've in Watford, Potso's in Potso's ownership of Watford. That one is is incredible. How, what like how interesting that move was and. Yeah, just it kind of wouldn't go far to say it goes into the Obilari bracket, but it's yeah, it's an interesting one. Obilari, I mean, is there other ones that players that just barely ever played like Sven Kums from Ghent? Yeah, that's that's probably so many. I can't can't remember off the top of my head to be honest. With you. Yeah, there was, it's um, so many. Yeah, so many, so many. Um, but on the right side of the pitch, uh, someone with one year left in his deal is Milo Sar. Move him on probably. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's time to time to. I mean, I think it was probably time to. Uh, I say should we have sold him the season before? No, I think I think it's time to move Sar on. I feel for him, to be honest. Um, yeah. We've spoken about it a lot on the channel. I, I, I think again, another one development has just been hindered by the change of manager. I mean, how many managers have gone through? I mean, it's, I've just lost count. It's just it's just crazy, really. Um, and I think w when I look back on it, and you look at hindsight probably in retrospect the right decision to keep him when we got promoted but probably oh, it's difficult isn't it I, because the problem is with us as a club because we because of the last couple of seasons we've gone up and gone down Sars been needed to, for us to get up and then we needed him to stay up Yeah. so every time he's just needed and at no point are we uh, people go oh, we should have sold him here we should have sold him then but actually you look at the seasons that have gone by and I think most of the fans were going, well, we should keep him because he's one of our best yeah. players. Yeah. So I think it's it's finally time now we've stayed in the championship for more than one season under him, with him, sorry, to move him on. And I mean, Sam, how much do you think we'll get for him? I mean, I'm looking at transfer marks at the moment and they valued him at 20 million euros. I mean, I'd snap your hand off for that. Yeah, I, I'd be shocked if we get even even half of that because I think Watford are going to be in a position where we have to sell with a year left on this deal. He probably doesn't want to be here. We're going to want to get some money for him. I think we'll get probably 10, 15, 10, 15 million for, for his minus R. Um, again, he hasn't kicked on the way that we all thought he would. Um, and I don't think that's anything down to him. I just think it's the situation with the head coaches. So I think you're right in terms of moving him on. And I've got no doubt I'm sure he'll go on and smash it at his next club, which will probably be a Premier League club as well. Um, 
Quadro Bar as well, another player coming back from loans, though. Um, I don't know too much about Bar, to be honest with you. We haven't had a loan yet, so maybe we'll stick him in the loan category. Yeah, let's go loan, mate. Uh, we, we've got to, we've got to yeah. use the loan category. I mean, he didn't he didn't tear it up at Fortuna Dusseldorf. Um, from just the stats-wise, look, I'm, I didn't watch the games he played in, but stats-wise, didn't really do a lot. Um, I think another loan. Um, yeah. Another one, I mean, just... Just it's just honestly it's just quite sad. These young players who just not looking getting a chance. Like we don't even know yeah. if he's a, if if bars any good. Yeah, do we? I mean, no one can actually turn around and go, he's great, can they? Can we? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I I know nothing about the player to be honest with you. Um, but someone who had a brilliant loan spell at Huddersfield and was big in keeping them up, Mister Joey Hungbo, who he spoke to on the channel a couple of years ago, and since then I've what had a, a real spot. I've had a real soft spot for him. One of the nicest blokes we've spoken to on here. Um, someone who seems really determined to make success of his career at Watford, keep sell or loan. So there'll be there'll be interest for him. I mean, I'd be yeah. absolutely shocked if Huddersfield weren't going to go and back in for him. He, he was he was brilliant for them. From what you're reading from yeah. their fans, there they're desperate to keep him. I think he's a keep for me. I think he's a squad player in the Championship. He's now proven in a struggling team. Sam, we have to say, you know, Huddersfield when he came in were. I know, obviously, you put it... I'm not saying it's all down to Hungbo, but, you know, Warnock came in. He, he's obviously got the best out of Joe. Um, yeah. Cutting, he's, he's got that real... Uh, what I like about Hungbo, and I, again, he's got that trait of, you know he's going to cut inside, but the defender can't really seem to do a lot about it. Um, yeah. Set-piece taker as well. I, I think, uh, look, for me, I'd keep him. Whether he wants to stay, again, it's another one. It's similar to Pollock. Does he want to stay on? Because, yeah. as I said, there'll be interest now from championship clubs who will look at him and go, well, he's done that at Huddersfield. We'll offer you starting uh, a starting role. And I don't think we will, we'll offer that with him at Watford. No. So, look, put it this way, Sam. If there was a, a good offer on the table, I probably would accept it. Yeah. Um, but I'd like to keep Joe. I think I think it'd be a good squad player to have, particularly that front three. I agree with you. And I, I'd say that... If I was in Joe's situation, at least, I'd probably give Watford until January because to see how much he plays and how his development's going because he's got the Neil Warnock seal of approval. Neil Warnock seemed to absolutely love him at Huddersfield. And for me, that goes a long way in seeing that this is a good player with a good attitude because we know that throughout his career, Warnock wouldn't have touched a player like that if they weren't right for him. Um, and I just think that where he's, again, probably struggled at Watford is the amount of turn the turnover in managers he hasn't been able to really succeed. And I think he had that stability at Huddersfield, which I think if he gets that stability at Watford, I think he could really thrive with us. Um, so I'd definitely keep Joe Hungbo if we can. Um, like Kamara, a player who's not actually ours, I'm not sure if you can see that now at the bottom of the screen, but Mateus Martins um, obviously belongs to Udinese. Um, I think like Kamara, if Watford won him, we could probably get him back. But would you leave him there or would you try and bring him back? Again, from what I saw from Martins, he was quite raw, um, really bright, really positive on the ball. But I think there's probably a reason we don't know about to why he probably didn't play as much, if we're honest. Yeah. Um, that's obviously reading between the lines. We don't know anything, but it's very strange to have a guy who was playing in the under-23s, was ready to play and just didn't even get looking, um, which suggests to me that obviously they've agreed that he won't play anymore this se um, last season. So I don't think we'll see him again, similar to Kamara. So I'd probably just keep that, yeah. keep it like that. Um, but I, I, I thought I think Martins looked bright actually. I mean, the fun fact about him, he was the the biggest transfer in Syria in the whole of Syria in January, and then he came yeah, straight. In January. To yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous that. Um, Weird, but yeah, yeah, I think, I think we'll, he'll probably end up staying at Udinese, and again, all the best to Mateus Martins. The striker position, we're obviously quite light now because. Um, King and Davis has gone back to Aston Villa. Um, Ara Ar Aruge has gone back to Benfica. Um, Raymond I was released, obviously. So we've got three options over here. Um, and the main man, Pedro. And Pedro as well, of course. Oh, I've tried to keep him out of my mind so I don't get upset <laughs> about him all over again. Um, Vacun Bayo, first of all, scored some big goals for Watford. Oh, I mean. Actually, did from what I was reading, did pretty well when he went back to um, Charleroi in um, in Belgium. I I probably probably sell. 
if I'm it's honest. Um, uh, it's not a loan. Would you yeah. keep for five million? I mean, uh, I. Do you think that's an element, Jacob? On the five million price tag, do you think if he came in, say, for a million pounds, do you think he'd be viewed a lot more favourably by Watford fans because he did score some big goals for us? Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I think I think that goes. That's always the case, really, isn't it, with players? I mean, you look at Saar, for example. If he was half the price, we'd say it was an unbelievable bit of business, wouldn't we? So, yeah. um, still, it's been a it probably overall you look back and it, it's got a decent business with Saar, but with Bayo, I just. I think it says a lot that he's gone back to his previous club within six months of joining us. Um, which And that probably suggests to me that they'll be quite willing to maybe buy him back. But we're going to we're gonna lose money on him if we paid five million for him. Um, yeah, definitely. I'd probably sell Sam, if I'm honest. Because I, I, I look at his attributes as well, and you've got to think, would Ishmael like him? And probably as an option off the bench, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you reckon? Would you keep I'd probably move them on to be honest with you. Like I say, I, I think I'll always have that. I'll, I'll always have that Bayo moment for the Norwich away goal, the middles for a home goal. So definitely not someone I'll look back on with any bad memories in particular. Um, and I wish him all the best, but I probably would move them on to be honest with you. Um, a man who's out of contract though, um, Brit Sombolonga, would you renew or move on? I, do you know what? I actually would have renewed Brit. Yeah. I would have renewed Um I don't think we are going to. No. But if it was me, I think as a player who was getting sharper, I think the more he played. Don't get me wrong, he didn't he didn't set the world alight. But again, probably out of all of the free agents, I know I mentioned Bakuna, but I probably would have kept Brit as a squad player. Um, yeah. But by all accounts, I think it probably makes sense. I get I get why we I get why we'd move him on. But I was just thinking, out of all the free agents, I probably would have kept him. But I think, I think, we'll, I think, move him on. If I'm honest, I'm yeah, actually not. Yeah, and the reports are saying that uh, British Sombolonga will be moved on uh, in the summer, or he already has been moved on. And I hope that his uh, recovery from injury still continues to be going okay, and that he finds a new club. The last man on the list, on this really long list, there have been so many players that we've kept, sold. Uh, one has gone out on loan. The last man here, Toby Adiemo. I think he's another loan, to be honest with you. I think he's someone. I think a loan. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I completely agree. Yeah. I think I think Toby had the moment, arguably, of the season uh, against Blackpool. I mean, I, I, you know, just everything about that moment was just amazing. But he needs to play regularly, and for, you know, three year deal is, is brilliant. I think he's got actually an option of another of a further year as well. So, a brilliant, yeah. brilliant deal for for Adiemo. At the moment, I don't think he's championship ready. Um, no. What I've seen, it's a play all the time. So I actually think, similar to what Hungbo's done, maybe not at a championship club, but at a League Two or League One, or similar to what Shaq Ford's done at York. You yeah. know, I think Shaq Ford's produced pretty good numbers, actually, when you look at I know it's the National League, but a lot of players do go on to, do, to good things. And you, when you see that and you see that season, you go, well, he's got a career here in professional football and I think we have to do the same with Eddie Amo whether that's League 2 um, or wherever we just need to send him out alone and get that get more uh, men's first team football because for me under 23s is sterile there's no edge to the games I've watched quite yeah. a lot of them there's nothing in them really and you can only develop so far personally yeah, in those games so. definitely I think League 1 League 2 and you just reminded me actually then there's a final name the last one Shaq Ford keep playing or sell <laughs> I think another loan, actually. Yeah. I think another loan. Yeah. Uh, at a team yeah. above the National League. Um, yeah. I think maybe at like a League Two or League... I think a League One, actually, would probably be the best... I think the league, a League One team would be the best um, sort of gauge of how good he actually is. Because I think yeah. National League is, is, is great. That means he could pretty much play at League Two and do well. But I think League One, if you do well in League One, you're going to do well in the Championship, I think, against most teams. So yeah. I think that's I, I think I, I think I'd send him out alone again. But Sam, I have to ask, how many players have we actually got to keep? So to wrap up the video, then the current players that Jacob and I have for next season, we have goalkeepers Madhu Krakoya and Ben Hamer. At left back, we've got James Morris. Centre backs, we've got Ryan Porteous and Wesley Hoot. So I think we're up to five at the moment. Uh, at right back, we've got Andrews, Gaspar, and Ferreira. That's eight. In centre mid, we've got Aspria and Kiembe, that's 10. And then we've got Sema, and then we've got Joe Hungbo. So I think we've got 12 players 
um, that we've decided to keep for next season. Going out on loan, we have uh, Quadro Bar, Toby Adiemo and Shaq Ford. And everyone else really we're getting rid of. So it's a long list. How many, so how many, really how many players have we got there, Sam? Do you, like, cause, uh, is it, it's it's 26 man squad, right? Yeah, I think we've got 12 players at the moment that us two would keep. I think I just counted 12. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, nice. my God. Yeah. Uh, it's a it big is, summer. Bed manga. Are yeah, are you, are you confident going into it, Jacob? And if I'm honest, no. No, no. I'd be like, look, Sam, I'd be lying. It would be blind optimism if I was set to sit here and say to you and people watching, I feel really confident about the next season and I feel confident that Ishmael is going to guide us to promotion and we're going to have a great season. I, if anything, I'm I'm just worried about how this squad's going to shape up because I think it needs major surgery. I think it has done for a while. Uh, and I think the main thing about Ishmael, and I think we've got to back Ishmael as, as you know, as difficult as it is as fans with what's been happening. It is difficult. I understand that. I'm not, you know, I'm, again, I'm not blind to that. But, we have to back him and we have to give him the backing as fans. But most importantly, the club have to back him. You know, I mean, yeah. it's all well and good. It, I almost think it's good that there's no interviews in a way, weird way because there'll be another repeat of Rob Edward, the Rob Edward situation. We can't have that again. Like, we, we cannot have that again. I, my only worry, Sam, is with Ishmael, and this is kind of the first I've spoken about him, is his style was very specific with a 3-4-3, with high intensity, with high pressing, direct football and you look at the roles in the team that he had at Barnsley that he had at West Brom which is the best gauge of what he's done in England and it required a specific type of player now I take hope from the fact that Ben Manga aligned with the the managers that were linked all had a similar style of play so clearly Ben Manga's gone this is the style of player one we pick a manager from there I just we just have to get this window right I've said that, but again, Sammy, I sound like a broken record. I said that last summer. I said that the summer before. But I feel like this one more than ever could go wrong if we don't get it. If we don't execute what we need to do, it could go wrong quite quickly because we've got to, make, you know, as fans, you know, patience, patience is, and this is nothing against Ishmael, but patience is going to be wearing thin based on the last two seasons. You know, we, we, need, we need to be out the blocks quick in the in next season. Yeah. I have to say, you know, we can't, We've, to be fair, with Rob, we did that, and it it did, t- and we probably went out too quickly in a weird way. But at the same time, we have to start well. We have to have signs that we're looking to play. We're lo- we're we're merging as a team now. One thing we do want to mention, Sam, and I wanted to throw it over to you, was about yeah. what the news we heard today about Ishmael being keen on bringing a ex Watford legend in, and there's three players, ex players who are regarded as legends by the fans who have been linked. Now, you put a tweet out saying it was either Nigel Gibbs, Robbo, Paul Robinson, who I'd be, I think those two would be amazing, by the way, especially with Gibbs's coaching experience at Spurs, Robbo at Millwall, who's just got his pro licence, Troy Deeney, the other one. So, out of the three that you mentioned there, I mean, they're probably the most likely candidates. Who do you reckon, if you had to put your money on? Yeah, I think another name to throw in there would be Lloyd Doyley as well, because he's done really well Lloyd. at Warren Woods over the last couple of years. I'd probably say Robbo, to be honest with you. I mean, he's done a good job at Mill. I know they didn't really get over the line at the end of the season into a playoff place, but my thing is, my only hesitancy with this, I hope we're doing it for the right reasons, not just as a PR move, to get fans on side and to paper over the cracks. I want to do it because it's someone, A, that Ismail wants, and B, because it's the right fit, and because it's genuinely the right thing to do. Not because it's going to get fans thinking or, you know, that they're really understanding the club again. I want them to do it because they're good at their job and because they can genuinely help us as a football club. So hopefully we'll be able to stick a picture um, of the uh, of our list over here um, on the video if we're able to. If not, you'll be able to find it on our social media. Jacob, thank you so much for joining me today, mate. My pleasure. Sam, you're, you're an absolute pro, mate. The way that was flowing through, I was just sitting back going, this is amazing. I'm just be on the other side of it. <laughs> oh, it's my first my first time doing this as well. I, I, it gives me massive respect for you doing it over the last few years. So glad that you've had been able to take a break this year and really take a Mate, take a seat. But yeah. as as we said at the top of the show, it'd be interesting to hear what everyone thinks in the comment section. This yeah. one always gets loads of comments. We want the comments. We want to hear what you think. Agree, disagree. But we hope you enjoyed it as well. And Sam, what a man! Absolute natural.
I think we might take a couple of weeks off now, just uh, enjoy the summer a bit before the transfer window opens and before the merry-go-round happens, knowing Watford <laughs> we might be back in the next few days anyway with some breaking news. Um, so make sure to keep an eye out on our socials for our next video and for the latest breaking Watford news. And as what you've seen here, it is going to be a really busy summer. Make sure to like and subscribe. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below and we'll see you all soon. Up the Ornets.